Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr Telephone and today I'm going to talk about how to do a telephone extension. So if you've got your master socket in the hallway and you want to do an extension for your skybox, for your broadband, uh, for another phone and you want to bring it to a different room, then you can do this job yourself. It's not that hard to do, you just have to get the right, uh, right, bits, of, uh, right bits of equipment. So I'm going to talk about the wire to begin with. Now a lot of people get confused about the different types of wire there are. It's always called in pairs because with telephone wire the wires are twisted. So each pair of wire are twisted round each other. So in this cable, this is a four core cable, but it has two pairs. So there's four wires in it, but there's two pairs. So as you go down the cable, the orange pair will be twisted round each other and the blue pair will be twisted round each other. This is a two pair cable. This one here is a three pair cable. So there's six wires, three pairs. You've got the blue pair, the orange pair, and the green pair. That's a three pair cable. And you also have this type of cable, which is a four pair cable. This is actually Cat5e cable. So you have a blue pair, orange pair, green pair, and a brown pair. When it comes to telephone extensions, it only uses three wires. So that's one pair and then another wire for the ringer wire, so that's three wires. So you don't need to use four pair cable and you don't need to use three pair cable. Two pair cable is absolutely fine because the blues will make it work and the orange will make it ring. There's nothing wrong with using three pairs or four pair because you might want to put a four pair cable in and then you've got spare wires to run another service down in the future if you wanted a dedicated ADSL line or if you wanted another phone extension if you had two telephone lines in your house and there's nothing wrong with running four pairs. I think it's quite a good idea to run more, more, uh, more, uh, a higher pair cable because then you don't have to run a cable again in the future if you, uh, if you want to run another service down the line. Now, always use either Cat5e cable or BT type cable which is, the spec is CW1308 and what that specifies is that it's twisted cable. Do not use this cable. This is flat, can you see it's flat? This is the rounded cable, because the pairs are twisted. This is flat cable, and when you pull the, the wires out, they're not twisted around each other, they're just individual wires going all the way down. It will work fine for voice, but you'll get problems with your broadband. Also, it's stranded cable. The uh, telephone cable that we need for extensions is a solid core of copper, so that's a solid core, while this is stranded, I don't know if you want to zoom into that. So this is all the little strands. And the other one's a solid, a solid piece of copper. So we want the solid piece of copper, not the strands, because when we use a punch down tool to punch into the IDC connections, which you'll see in a minute, the stranded cable won't work properly. It might just about grip, but you're going to get a noisy line or it will go faulty over time. So don't use the uh, stranded cable. If you're adamant you're using this because you've already got it, then you're going to have to use screw terminals on your extension socket. And when it comes to the master socket provided by your service provider, it's very unlikely it's going to be screw terminals. So I wouldn't recommend using stranded cable at all. So get yourself some proper BT spec CW1308 cable or Cat5 cable and uh, it will work absolutely fine. So you can connect from either your master socket or an existing extension socket. It doesn't matter where you tee into the line, as long as it's after the master socket, so it can I don't never tee into the wire coming into the house. So either run it from the front plate of the NTE5 master socket, or your master socket might look like this. It might be an old style one, it might be like this. You then have to run it from the back, or you can run from existing working extension point or an existing working junction box. As long as it's all after the master socket, you can run your extension wherever you like. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to run it from the NTE master socket. So the good thing about this is it comes in two halves, the back plate and the front plate. I've talked about this in another video. And uh, what you have to do is, so if we come down here now, if we come down here, undo the two screws. And the front plate slides out. Now at the moment there's nothing connected to it, so in this example we've got no extensions. You might undo this and you might already have an extension connected to it. You're allowed to put two wires into these IDC connections. So you might already have one wire in each of them and you can put another extension into them. 
If you've already got two wires in here, don't push the third wire in, it won't make a good connection. So uh, if you've already got two wires in there, you're going to have to think about cutting one of the cables and using some jelly crimps to make two cables into one cable because you will only get two wires in here. Sometimes people do put the third one in, but it doesn't make a good connection. Now the nice thing about these new master sockets is you can put your extension onto the front plate and when you plug it in, it's all connected. But when you unplug it, it disconnects all your wiring from the incoming line. So when you get your phone and plug it into this test socket here, then it's testing purely the, the service provider's line and you've eliminated all your extension wiring by unplugging this. So it's a nice way of doing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some two pair cable because this is the cheapest cable you get. Obviously if it's three pair cable or four pair cable, it's gonna be more expensive. Now, you need to pass it through the socket. In this instance, I'm gonna pass it through the hole at the bottom. You can pass it through the hole at the back if you're drilling out of the wall, so it can go through there, or it can go through here. If your socket is surface mounted, so if it, sorry, flush mounted, so if it hasn't got the back box, you can actually just put your cable on that bit there. So you can see there's a little, little cut out there. So it's up to you how you do it, depending on if your box is surface mounted or flush mounted. So do whatever's easiest, whatever looks neatest. On this video, I'm gonna be passing it through the hole at the bottom. So it goes up through there. Now, to strip the cable back, you need some cutters or you need a special stripper to strip it back. If you're worried about damaging the cable, then you can always use the drawstring. So I've stripped it back, but I'm not sure if I've damaged the internal wires. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the drawstring, which is this separate little bit of string here, to cut down the uh, outer sheath. And by doing that, I know now that I definitely haven't damaged any of the internal wires. So cut away the outer sheath and the drawstring. Cut away where the wires might be damaged from where we made the initial cuts to get, to get the wires out of the sheath. Now I know that those wires are intact. So I've got my front plate here. You need to use a little cable tie through here. And, uh, well actually we'll do the cable tie in a minute. So what we'll do is give yourself plenty of slack while you're working with it and then you can put it back through afterwards. So the color code is quite simple. On this one here, there's only three terminals, two, three, and five. A lot of them might have two, three, four, and five. Some have one, two, three, four, five, and six. You only ever need to use two, three, and five. The other wires are redundant. You don't need to use them. So what we do is we put the blue wire, that's the solid blue wire, into terminal number two. And we punch it in. Now, this is a proper IDC tool. You also get the cheap plastic punch down ones. They do the same job, but the cheap plastic punch down one doesn't cut, doesn't cut the wire when it goes through. So I'm gonna connect the white wire with the blue, the white wire with the little blue bits to number five, and I'm gonna use the, the plastic tool. So you push it in until it won't go in anymore. So you push it in right to the bottom. But as you can see, it doesn't cut the excess wire coming through, so you're just gonna to have to snip it. So if you're doing a lot of terminating, get yourself a, uh, a proper tool, but if you're only doing the odd job, then this is absolutely fine. And the orange wire goes to number three. So again, punch it into the very bottom, make sure it goes all the way down, and cut off the slack. If you're using this tool, you don't have to cut off the slack, because the cutter does it for you, it snips the wire there. So if you look closely there, you've got the white blue to number five, the orange to number three, and the blue to number two. And if you look closely at the socket, you should be able to just see five, three, and two. So they're all labeled up, so you just need to copy that color code onto the termination. So white blue to five, orange to three, blue to two, blue with the tiny white bits to number two. So the blue, and, the blue and the white blue make the line work and the orange one makes it ring. So two and five makes the line work and three's the ringer wire. Now, you're gonna have a leftover wire. Just coil it up, don't worry about it. If you're using a three pair cable or a four pair cable, you can have loads of leftover wires. Just coil them up, they won't go anywhere. Just leave them there and then you can use them again for another service in the future. Get your cable tie, pass it through that bit there. I'm just gonna show you that before I do that. So you pass it through that way. The cable comes from that way there. And then you just do up the cable tie and cut the excess off. 
So that is how it should look. Okay, so that's that. Now we need to plug this in. Plugs in there. You can always leave a little bit of slack because it's always handy to have a bit of slack when you open it up in the future. You don't want to do it too tight. Have a nice bit of slack. Okay. Plug that in there. And then you can do up the wires. Do, oh, sorry, do up the screws. Now, the other end, pretend this cable is, it could be five meters long, 10 meters long, 20 meters long, whatever, whatever, however many meters it takes to, to get to the other destination. And then when you get to the other destination, you need to strip the wire back. Again, if you think you may have damaged the wires, use the drawstring. Like that. Should give myself a bit more. Cut the sheath and the drawstring away. Cut the damaged bits of wire away. And now we need to connect to the extension socket. In this example, I'm just using a two stroke three A. I've done already done a video about the different LJ series of jacks, the line jacks. This is called a two stroke three A. But you can put it onto a three stroke three A if you want. This is if you're gonna flush mount it. So if you've got an electrical back box in the wall, you can just put this one on the wall and it will be flush mounted. But on this one, the two series comes with its own back box. So I'm just gonna connect this one up here. It comes with a little cable tie. Now, again, with the box, there's numerous back uh, knockout holes. You can do uh, one at the top, one at the side there, one at the side there, and one at the bottom. So often, if you're running the cable along a skirting board, then sometimes it can be neatest to put it on the side hole or the bottom hole. I often like the bottom hole because it, it, hides, it hides the cable quite well. So I'm just going to take out the bottom knockout, so if you look closely. There we go, so that's the bottom knockout gone out of it. Pass the wire through. Obviously this is going to be attached to the wall. And now I need to wire this one up. So again, you use exactly the, exactly the same. So if you come in nice and close now, you can see the terminals. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just like in here, we're only going to use two and five and number three. So we use the blue pair on two and five and the orange to number three. So the solid blue wire with the tiny blue bits goes to number two. I used the proper tool this time. Oh, as well, when you're looking at the IDC, you need to work out which way to put the wire because you don't want to be putting the wires this way around. It has to be this way around. If you look closely, you will see that there's a little shoulder so this side here is flat, flat there, and there's a little shoulder here, that little bit sticking out. The shoulder is to allow you to cut the wire. So basically that's the way it goes. So if you look at the IDC, if it's got the shoulder, that always the wire always has to go the other side of that. So coming into the other side, and then you cut the wire, that side. So the blue wire goes there. The white blue wire goes to number five. So that's the blue wire to number two and the white blue to number five and then the orange wire to number three. And that is it. Remember, you don't have to connect this one here. It's, it's a spare wire. So they're the only three wires you need. White blue to five, blue to two and orange to three. Some people do connect this for neatness to number four, but you don't have to, it doesn't do anything. And then what you need to do is you need to cable tie not the wires, never cable tie the wires, always cable tie the sheath. So get your cable tie, put it through there. Cut off the excess. And then uh, that one's spare. And that's it, that's all it is. And then that will work. And then you just do that one up there like so. Okay. And that's how you do an extension. And then if you ever get a fault in the future, you just unplug your extension from uh, the front plate from your master socket, plug the phone in there. If the phone works there, you know you've got a problem with your internal wiring, so you can do a bit of fault finding. Now, when you're running the cable, there's two ways of doing it. The neatest way is to use a staple, a staple gun, with little round staples in, not the staples that you do a bit of upholstery with. You need special cable, cable tacker staples. They're uh, like a that kind of shape and often they have a bit of white paint on them so they blend in nicely 
but I appreciate a lot of you are not going to go out and buy a staple gun just for the just for the one job. So get yourself some little cable clips and always put the nail underneath the cable clip. So when you're running along the skirting board or around the architrave, always put the nail to support to support the wire underneath. And uh, yeah, do them about every every foot or so, or just under about about like that to make a nice neat job. When you go around the corners, put the cables clips closer together. So if you were to go around the corner, do the cable clips like so. And that's it, so it's quite uh, quite straightforward. Your master socket may not necessarily look like that. It may look like that. It's exactly the same principle. You just go across to two, five, and three. But again, remember, you can only have two wires. So if this is your master, you're already gonna have a wire in there, so you'll only be able to one, wire one extension from here. But that's not to say you can't run the extension from an existing extension that's already there. And you may have a, an old, you might have a screw terminal one like this as one of your extensions. Again, that's fine. If you're dealing with screw terminals, I'll just quickly show you this. What you need to do is strip the wires back, and it's always good to just fold the wire over, fold the wire over to get a nice good connection. So when you put it in the screw terminal. Fills up the hole nicely. Like so. Good thing about screw terminals is that you can fit as many wires as, as, as you can fit, so you're not limited to two wires like you are in the IDC. You might be able to get three, you might be able to get four in there. The bad thing about the screw terminals is they're more fiddly and they're, uh, they're not as good for broadband. So if you've got broadband on your line, the IDC connection does make a better connection than the screw terminals. But it will still, you know, it will still work. And sometimes, sometimes you have to fit these if you haven't got enough uh, space in the IDC terminals. So I hope that makes sense. If you need any of these products, you can buy them from my eBay shop. That's www.mrtelephone.co.uk. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you, uh, it'd be good if you could subscribe so you can see more how-to videos in the future. I will be doing a lot more of these. Thanks very much. Bye now.